Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I do my makeup. I'm going to do all different levels of difficulty when it comes to doing makeup. You can do things that are very simple and you can do things that are harder. The things that are more simple would be putting on lip gloss and putting on maybe mascara and keeping it simple like that. Here we go. Moisturizer is the first step. I put it on all over my face, making sure that there are no dry areas. Eye cream is the next step. Eye cream is very important because it helps prevent wrinkles and it also smooths out the under eye so that when you apply concealer, it goes on much smoother. Foundation is the next step. I put some foundation on the back of my hand and then I take my sponge on my brush and I dip it into the foundation that's on my hand. I then apply it to my face in downward motions. I bring it down my chin and then I bring it across my whole cheek and up around my nose and in between my eyebrows and onto my forehead. I make sure that there's no areas that I missed and it's smooth. When using a sponge, you want to get it wet, but you don't want it to be soaking wet, so you need to squeeze out all extra water before you use it. On the other side of my face, I'm going to show you how to use a foundation brush. You do it the same way you use the sponge. You dip it into the foundation on the back of your hand, and then you apply it to your cheeks, to your nose, your forehead, around your eyebrow, and down your chin, making sure you don't miss any areas. You don't put foundation on your eyelids or underneath your eyes because that's where you're going to put your concealer. Concealer is the next step. First I put little dots underneath my eyes and then I get out my sponge and I slowly like bring the concealer up around my eyelids and close to my eyelids and all around my eye socket. On the opposite eye I'm going to use my finger to apply it so I'm going to apply the same dots but then I'll use my finger instead. You want to use your middle or your ring finger because those are the softest fingers and then you want to smooth it towards your eye line and around your eye socket and all around your lid. Just making sure that you can get it as smooth as possible. And then you want to make sure that you smear it out and blend it really good on your cheekbone. The next step is setting your under eyes. You want to use a setting powder and a flat brush. It doesn't matter what brush, just as long as it's got a flat tip. Then you dip your flat tipped brush into the powder and tap off all excess. And then you slowly dab it on around your under eye, making sure to get in all creases. This helps smooth out your concealer and make sure that you don't get any creases in your concealer. The next step is setting your entire face with a powder brush. You dip it into the setting powder and you just put it on your entire face in every area and every crease. The next step is contouring. A lot of people find this part very difficult, but it's not that hard once you practice. You need to find your cheekbone line. Your natural cheekbone is usually from the top of your ear down to the corner of your mouth. That's the easiest way to find it, and that's where you want to contour. You don't want to contour, though, all the way down to the side of your mouth. You only want to contour about two inches down, usually from the top of your ear, about two inches slanted down towards your mouth. As you can see on mine, mine's about two inches, two and a half inches. Make sure that you're using a matte bronzer and not a shimmer bronzer because shimmery bronzers don't work well when you're contouring. 
As you can see, my contour is a little uneven. One side is a little bit longer, but once you blend it out, you won't be able to tell. So don't worry if you can't get it perfect. It's okay. Next, you want to put a little bit of bronzer on your brush and go around your hairline. You can go around the side of your temples and connect it down with your cheek contour. You don't have to do all of the parts of this contour and if you don't want to. You don't have to do any contour and if you don't want to. It's all up to you. The next step is contouring the nose. You want to get a little flat brush and you want to put the bronzer on it and tap off all the excess and then you want to go down the bridge of your nose and on the sides of your nostrils if you have a wider nose. You can also do a little bit on the tip near the nostrils and that just makes it look a little smaller. Again this part is completely optional. You do not have to contour your nose. It's all up to you and what you want to do to your face. I like to contour my face on a daily basis because I have such a round face and doing contouring really makes it have more structure. I also like to do my chin line as well. The next step is applying blush. I like to use a more neutral blush, ones that don't really stand out and are super bright. I don't, they don't really look good on my skin tone. You want to put the blush where my finger is right now and you want to focus the main color up towards the ear part of your cheekbone. You don't want to put a ton of color right in the center of your cheek. You want the main focus to kind of be towards the sides of your face. You can bring a little bit of color towards the center of your cheek, but you want to keep the main focus on the sides up towards the ear part. Also remember to tap off your brush before you apply the blush because you don't want one big splotch of color right in the center of your face. The next step is cleaning up your contour line. You want to take the same brush that you use to set your under eyes and you want to make a line underneath where you apply the bronzer and the blush. This makes it more defined when you clean it up. It just looks like it's more put together. Also, this is a completely optional part if you don't want a super defined line. If you do want to clean up your contour line, you need to let it sit for a little while and I usually do my highlighter, which is the next step while I wait. This is highlighter. Um, you can apply it to several different areas of your face, one being right above where you applied the blush. I usually use my finger because that tends to blend it the best and I just do it right on top of that and I bring it up around the eyebrow. Do the same with a brush on this side. You can use either method, but I always tend to blend it out with my finger anyway. When highlighting the rest of your face, you can put some on the tip of your nose, down the bridge of your nose, right down the middle, some on your forehead, some above your lips, which is your cupid's bow, and some on your chin. Next step is blending in the contour line. So you want to take a flat brush and blend in the contour line so they look a little bit more natural. You also want to blend the chin line and the hairline. Next step is wiping off your lips. You want to use a wet paper towel or a makeup wipe and you want to wipe off all the foundation that may have gotten on your lips. Next is eyebrows. You want to use an eyebrow brush, also known as a spoolie, and you want to brush your eyebrow hairs down so that they're all laying flat. Then I use an eyebrow pencil and I go along with the natural line of my eyebrow. I use a shade that is one shade lighter than my actual eyebrow so it blends better. And then I draw it on where I think it should go and then I use the spoolie to run it through the hairs to make it more natural and not look like it's been drawn on. This step may not be necessary for everyone. A lot of you already have nice thick eyebrows and you don't need to fill them in. However, I overplucked my eyebrows when I was 13 and they never grew back. 
Then you're going to brush down your eyebrows again, which will blend in the eyebrow pencil to your eyebrows. Next is eyeshadow. You want to use a big fluffy brush and you want to take a neutral color, like a neutral brown, and you want to blend it into where your eye creases. So you want to go back and forth until it's blended in really well. You can come up towards your eyebrow a little bit, but you want to keep it close to the crease of your eye. Next I took an eyeshadow that was a little bit darker than the shade I'm using, but it was still a natural tone. And I just went into the crease again with that one. This just helps define the eyes. You don't have to do this step. You can keep it very natural looking. I just like it to be more sculpted. Make sure that when you're applying this eyeshadow that you really, really blend. You want to make sure that there are no harsh lines and everything looks smooth. You can use different colors than me. You don't have to use the same ones. I just prefer the natural tones in the creases. And I start off a lot of my eye makeup looks with this step. Next, I use a darker shade of brown and put it on a flat eyeshadow brush. I then start on the outer edge of my eyelid and I blend it towards the center of my eyelid but I don't go up above the crease. I stay right underneath the crease and I only go to the middle part of my eye. You also don't want to go past the edge of your eyelid. You want to keep it on your actual eyelid. Next you want to use the big fluffy brush just to blend. You don't put any color on it. You just take it and go into the crease so that the harsh lines from the darker eyeshadow you just put on will blend really well into the eyelid. Now you want to clean off the flat eyeshadow brush that you just used for the dark brown. Next you want to use a gold eyeshadow and you want to put it on that same small brush and you want to go onto your inner corner of your eyelid and you want to stay below the crease the same way you did with the dark brown and you only want to stay within the other side of the eyelid that you didn't use the dark brown on. Make sure that you stay below the crease in your eyelid and you don't go past the corner of your eye. Again you want to use the big fluffy brush with nothing on it, no eyeshadow, and just blend it all in. Then I just use my finger and I blend in the gold and the dark brown on the eyelid and make sure that it looks nice and smooth and blends nicely. Clean that small flat brush off because you're going to use it one more time. Next you're going to get a pearly shimmery color and you're going to put it on the small flat brush again. Then you're going to apply it right under the eyebrow line. You can put it all the way across the bottom of your eyebrow. my finger to blend the pearly color in with the dark brown color, making sure there are no harsh lines. Now I'm going to use a very small eyeshadow brush to line the lower eye line. I'm going to start at the corner with a light brown and bring it to about the middle of my eye. You can use whatever color you want to use for your eyeliner. I sometimes will use bright colors. Now on to liquid liner. I usually start right in the middle of my eyelid and take it down the eye line to the outer corner. Then I come back up and bring the eyeliner down into the inner corner of my eye line. It's easier to apply liquid eyeliner when you do very small strokes rather than trying to draw the entire line in one motion. It doesn't have to be exactly straight. It's going to be hard for people to tell that it isn't straight. You just want to try to get it straight as possible. Practice really makes perfect with eyeliner. You have to try it many, many times before you'll probably get it right. It's not easy.
But I think that if you practice enough, eventually you will get it. Eyeliner isn't something that I use on a daily basis. It is kind of time consuming, so usually I will just use mascara unless I have time to do my eyeliner. <laughs> to my other eye. The next step is mascara. You want to use short brush strokes upward onto your eyelashes. You want to make sure that they're all covered and there's no missing areas that don't have mascara. Also it helps to hold your brush up against your eyelashes for a few seconds and just hold it there. And that helps with curling the eyelashes. Make sure that you run your brush through enough though so you don't have any clumps on there. However, running the brush through the eyelashes too many times can create clumps. Also, wiggling your brush upwards as you're applying it helps with keeping the clumps out. Now on to the lower lashes. You want to take your brush and slowly wiggle it back and forth on the lower lashes. You want to do this very gently and you want to make sure that you don't have any clumps. Also make sure that you're going in a downward motion while you're doing this. Again, this part is optional. I just like to do it because it defines the eyes pretty well. Also, don't forget to do the other eye. This is what your eyes should look like after you complete both sides. Now move it on to lips. First I apply lip balm. This is me applying a tinted lip balm. This is what I prefer to wear on a daily basis because they're easy to put on. It's hard to mess them up, and they provide moisture to your lips as well. When applying any lip product, I usually start in the middle of my lip, and then I work outwards towards the corners. I make sure that it's fully covered, and I follow along the lip line. You can always do more than one coat of lip balm if you want to. This will make it more pigmented and give you more color. This is me using a lip gloss. Lip glosses are really easy to use because they're usually clear, and if you mess them up, you can't really tell because they're clear. When I apply lip gloss, I start in the middle and I work my way outwards into the corners. I then press my lips together to get it on the top lip and I go back and patch up any areas that are missing lip gloss. I still make sure to try to stay in the lines within my lips so I don't get it all over my face. This is me applying a lip gloss that has color to it. You have to be somewhat careful with these because they are kind of tricky. You have to stay within the lines of your lips very carefully and use the tip to kind of guide your way along your lip line. Then I move to the upper lip and I use the tip of the lip gloss and I line my lips so that it stays within the lines. I do it on both sides and then I fill in the rest of my lip with the lip gloss. When applying regular lipstick, liquid lipstick, lip gloss, lip balms, you use the same method. You start at the bottom lip, you start in the middle, you work your way to the corners, and then you start on your top lip, staying within the line of your lips, and then filling in the rest. Remember when you're applying mascara, you want to use an upward motion on your top lashes and a downward motion on your bottom lashes. You want to kind of wiggle your brush and do upward motions as you wiggle it and that will prevent getting clumps. You can also apply a second coat of mascara to your eyelashes if you want to. It's all personal preference. It's up to you. You want to make sure that all lashes are fully covered with mascara too on the top and the bottom.
again, I'm going to go over a lip gloss just in case you missed it in the other part. You just start on the middle part of your lip and you move towards the corners of your lips. I usually start on the bottom and then I move to the top. And I use the tip to guide my way through my lip line so I don't get it all over my face. Lip gloss and mascara are two of the easier parts of applying makeup. If you're a beginner, you may want to try these two things out and see if you want to move on to the stuff that's a little bit more difficult. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope that you learned something today and I will see you next time. Bye.